and welcome to another Simply Diagnostics video courtesy of www.simplydiag.net and we're here today in the simplydiag.net community hub we've got Mark behind the camera from a &J Autos in Cardiff <laughs> how are you Mark? You all I'm right? good thank you Steve good awesome. glad to be here awesome we're just going to shoot you a very quick video today on testing the three wire sensor now this particular car here it's a 2007 Nissan Qashqai um, with the M9R engine in it, 2 litre diesel and it's reporting a fault for the exhaust gas back pressure sensor circuit. So I thought it would be an ideal time to show you how to quickly test a 3 wire sensor using only a voltmeter and a test light. So what we've got, what we've got here, we've got the exhaust pressure sensor removed just for the purposes of the video. We could have done this test in situ and we've got 3 wires connected into the connector going back to the ECU, so we've got power supply, ground and signal and then we've got our multimeter here connected to battery ground so the first thing we want to do is just check our multimeter and make sure that our multimeter is reading correctly we've got battery voltage there on the multimeter so we know the leads and everything are okay and then what we're going to do now, we're just going to go down each of the wires that are connected to the sensor and see what we get on the multimeter so we've got red, blue and yellow, doesn't matter w what the pin assignment is or anything, we're just going to see what we've got. So on yellow, we've got 12 millivolts. On red, we've got 12 millivolts. And on blue, we've got 5 volts. So what we don't know is, is that 5 volts, is that the 5 volt from the, the VREF, the voltage reference, or is it a bias voltage down the signal line? So the easiest way to test that is using your incandescent test light. So we've got uh, the normal incandescent test light that's on my Amazon store. We've got the little um, battery clip adapter from the Power Probe 3. And all we're gonna do, we're gonna connect it to battery negative, and we're just gonna touch it on that wire and see if that wire will pull down. If it's a bias voltage, the voltage will drop to zero. If it's a 5 volt reference, it will stay as it is, because this test light will only allow 120 milliamps to flow through it, so it's a current limiting device. So we just separate and separate the pins a little bit, touch the test light to it. You can see the test light is lighting up slightly. We've still got 4.96 volts on there, so we know for definite that is the VREF. Then what we're going to do now, we're going to test our other two our other two wires, so we're going to switch over to battery positive with the test light, test the test light to make sure it works, and then we're just going to see what's on the other two wires. So on the red wire, the test light lights up, so that's a path to ground, most likely the, the centre ground itself, and we'll see what's on the other wire, the yellow, and there's nothing it doesn't light up so there's no no path to ground so then so we can we can say now we've definitely got a good rep v rep we've definitely got a good sense of ground and all we need to know now is is this wire the signal wire is that good all the way back to the ecu so the easiest way to do that is if we turn around and look at the screen there so we've got live data for the gas pressure sensor on the bottom one you can see there it says voltage supply exhaust gas pressure sensor but it's actually the signal so all we're going to do now I'm going to touch the test light connected to battery positive to that signal wire you see it doesn't light up but then if we look at the live data we've got 5 volts on the screen so that wire is good all the way back to the ECU as with any normal 5 volt sensor, what we'd expect to see, its operating range will be between 4.5 volts and half a volt. And we can see there, with, with, with just the key on, it's only registering 0 volts. So the sensor's dead. It needs a new sensor. Okay. So then, if we go over to our wiring diagram, so I'll just swap the tally over now. So here we've got, we've got the wiring diagram for this vehicle, courtesy of Hella HGS wiring diagrams. Component B27 is the one we're looking at. 
So you can see we've got um, a VRAP, a signal, uh, a VRAP for ground, and a and a signal wire. Yeah. So it's it's literally exact, you know, exactly the same as as that three wire sensor there and every other three wire sensor on the car. A VRAP, a signal, and a ground. Okay. So we know now our wire's okay. So if we go over to the whiteboard. So this is this is this is what we've got here. So we've got a representative diagram. We've got the engine ECU. We've got a three-wire sensor, a three-wire sensor, and a three-wire sensor. VRAP, signal, ground. And you can see if we look at it, we get a pointing stick. So our VRAP is typically five volts and it can be shared by pressure and position sensors. Okay. So you can see there. Our red, our V-ref goes off down to this sensor, goes across to this sensor, goes across to this sensor. Our ground has to be less than 100 millivolts and it can also be shared between sensors. So the black is our ground, is our ground, is our ground. The blue is our signal wire and it's typically registering key on between, it'll measure between half a volt and four and a half volts but it may have a bias voltage on it present which uh, would be would be normally five volts although there are variations on that now on some vehicles 3.3 volts some higher than that um, but the easiest way to test is it a bias voltage or is it a VREF is just to drop a, an incandescent test light to battery negative onto that wire if the voltage disappears it's a bias voltage and that proves the wire is good. If the voltage stays there, then we know that's a VREF and the, the, the wire is also good. So what we can, if you notice these wires are shared and we said here, it can be shared by pressure and position sensors. There are certain, um, certain sensors that you have, like uh, the MAP sensors with the built-in IAT on them, intake air temp and stuff like that. We have to be very careful of which pin we're checking because the intake air temp sensors, they're, they're of the thermistor family and they will have their own separate five volt reference, which the sensor actually pulls down and uses as a signal feedback. And that five volt cannot be shared by any other, any other sensor on the car. So I hope you found this video short, succinct, and this is exclusive to members of simplydive.net. Thanks for watching. You're awesome. Mark, do you want to say goodbye? Goodbye all. Yeah, how was your how was your ride along been, mate? Awesome, Steve. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. Let's just turn the camera around and let's let everybody see your beautiful smiling face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how, how have you gone on today, mate? Have you enjoyed Loved it? Every minute. Loved every minute. Very informative and uh, very educational. Brilliant. Real pleasure. Awesome. Good to be here. Awesome. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. Take care.